Good day and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. We're continuing the year of the poll. I got some stories to tell you about Edgar Allan Poe for this month's poll reads. So if you're interested, stay tuned because that's coming right up. Alright, good day and welcome to Drew's Book Reviews. So we're going to talk a little more Edgar Allan Poe today. But before we get into the stories for this month's poll video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to see more poll videos as I make them throughout the rest of the year of the year of the poll. You can also join me on the Discord that will be linked below. Talk a little bit about Poe. Now there's one big main story that I want to discuss this month on the year of the Poe. But first I'm going to briefly summarize some of the other stories that this this month that we have with Edgar Allan Poe, just because I don't have a lot to say to them, so I'll briefly summarize them. So from Poe's book here, we've got a few different stories, but in any case, the first one we're talking about, or I'll mention, is Nigeria. This one is basically about a guy who's on a drug trip, essentially. He admits to being on drugs and hallucinating. He's widowed. He buys this creepy estate, only to marry this other woman and become widowed yet again. And both him and his second wife basically are tripping on drugs throughout the whole story right through until his second wife's death. So it's basically a drug trip, which I mean, it's kind of certainly entertaining and fun to read. It, it's not definitely not the main story and I don't have a lot to say about Nigeria specifically. Story Morella, this one is basically a man who's lamenting the love that he has for his wife and the tragedy of losing his wife and his child uh, as his wife died in childbirth and later his child died as well. So he's basically, it's a love letter lamenting the loss and mourning the death of his wife. So not a lot to say about that, but through that story though, you can definitely feel the pain and the suffering and the anguish that this man is going through, dealing with the loss of people that are so important in his life. And that definitely shines through with the tale of Morella. And the, while I don't have a lot to say about it, can definitely feel the emotional context that Poe put into the writing for this particular story, the story of Morella, and you can really feel the despair that this person's feeling after losing his wife and later losing his child. So it definitely was a good short story, but I don't have a lot to say about Morella specifically. A Tale of the Ragged Mountains, again, short story, just a guy that gets lost in the mountains and trips up on drugs. So Poe seems to, at least for this month, he seems to really like this, these drug-induced hallucination type things going on with the stories happening this month for Edgar Allan Poe. Not a lot to say about that one. Uh, basically, that's all it is. The Spectacles was an interesting one because this is a story about a man who's basically mostly blind and he sees this woman at the opera and just falls madly in love with her. He becomes so besotted and obsessed with her that he basically turns into a stalker. He meets her, he falls in love with her. He desires so much to marry her. But the problem is he's practically blind, so he can't really see all that well. And finally, before they get married, the woman asks him to wear glasses so that he can see properly, essentially, only for him to discover Spoiler alert on this one if you haven't read it, but it turns out he's married his great 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 grandmother and didn't even realize it and she had been manipulating and toying with him from the beginning. Which is actually kind of funny when you think about it. I mean Edgar Allan Poe isn't really known for his comedy, but that is actually kind of funny when you think about it. I mean the guy's so obsessed, so crazy about this woman, he doesn't even stop to wonder who she is essentially well he does wonder who she is but he's so obsessed with this woman he doesn't realize that he's actually going after his great great grandmother because he's so blind and he's refused to wear glasses this whole time because he thinks maybe it makes him unattractive or something but the whole concept of that is actually pretty funny when you think about it and while poe isn't known for comedy i have to say this one this storyline kind of gives me a bit of a chuckle and it is quite funny so I did enjoy that one, The Spectacles, for sure. Uh, but that basically summarizes the stories I just wanted to briefly touch on that uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say about before we move on to our main story. And that is the narrative of Gordon A. Pym. Now, the narrative of Gordon A. Pym 
is easily the largest, longest story that I've read by Edgar Allan Poe, which typically is known for his poetry and his short stories. But this one is actually over 100 pages in this book. And you have to remember, this book has some very small writing on these big pages, essentially. So being over 100 pages is a big, long story for Edgar Allan Poe. It's actually divided into chapters, which we don't typically see with Edgar Allan Poe's stories. He's so this is the first one I've come across where there's actually chapters within the storyline and it's well over 100 pages for the narrative of Gordon A. Pym. And that alone is different from everything else that I've read by Poe so far this year. So the narrative of Gor Gordon A. Pym is re really it is a interesting sea voyage story. So Poe seems to really like these adventures at sea. This is definitely not the first sea voyage that I've read by Edgar Allan Poe. So he really seems to enjoy these sea disaster catastrophes. And essentially what happens is our main character is put onto this boat. He's smuggled aboard as a stowaway, essentially hidden beneath under the decks in this secluded sealed off storage room under the ship by a friend who wants him to come aboard on this ship with him. But on their voyage out to sea, something terrible happens, a mutiny happens, the mutineers take over the ship, kill most of the crew, leaving a few lone survivors. But the mutineers themselves don't even realize that Mr. Pym is a stowaway on this vessel. So now, of course, there's so much danger involved with him being discovered. His only companion is a dog. He's running out of food because they're trapped in this room. He's unable to get out. Him and the dog have no water left, no food left. And he's basically trapped with this hungry dog in a situation where he can't get out or he risks his own life. He's unable to get food or fresh or clean water. So you can imagine the situation is getting pretty desperate for our stowaway in this narrative. And that's just beginning of this tale. Eventually, there is a rebellion against the mutineers on this ship. Which, of course, is great and all. We've gotten rid of the mutineers. Everybody's safe, right? Well, no. Because during this rebellion against the mutineers, the ship is also caught up in this massive sea storm. Which is basically blowing them off course. The four remaining survivors, they don't really know how to run a ship. And their entire storage room below decks has been completely flooded out. There's that's completely filled with seawater. They're unable to gain access to the stores down below because they have no means to drain the water from the ship safely. And they're basically trapped in the middle of the South Pacific with no access to food, no access to fresh water. There's four of them. They're desperate for survival and they just keep floating across the ocean. And it takes them on their adventure across the South Pacific, down through the Antarctic, up to mysterious islands they've never encountered before, that nobody's been to. And throughout that, they also meet the inhabitants or natives of these islands that no one's ever been to, their adventures with them, and everything that goes on with these natives who maybe aren't as friendly as they initially appear. So the, the narrative of Gordon A. Pym is really actually quite an interesting story. It's a compelling story. It's definitely got an adventure in there. It's got mutiny. It's got pirates because the mutineers wanted to be pirates. It's got shipwreck situation. It's got encounters with native tribes who don't really want people around and trying to survive that and get around them. And it's really a story of survival and a story of adventure. And just, it is a really, really good story. I really liked that. I mean, we, we've got cannibalism in, in this as well and you know I'm not gonna say who's a cannibal you're probably thinking the native tribes right well no nope. and I'm just gonna leave it at that if you haven't read the narrative of Gordon May Pym now you got to read to find out who's actually being the cannibals in this situation but the yeah cannibalism pirates mutineers shipwrecks storms you know mysterious islands native tribes and it's just all around, it's just a grand, exciting, crazy adventure with the narrative of Gordon A. Pym, and I love this story. It is definitely, if I had to pick a favorite story from this month's poll reads, definitely the narrative of Gordon A. Pym would be on the top of the list for favorite of this month's poll reads. Because it's just, wow, loved it. I, I did. It might be one of my favorite Poe stories so far, the only one with actual chapters, which, you know, short stories can be good but I do enjoy a longer story of course so this definitely fits that criteria and it is just awesome 
really enjoyed the narrative of Gordon A. Pym from Edgar Allan Poe. And I definitely recommend that one from this month's read if you haven't already. I mean, Poe himself is a classic. And one thing I will say about the narrative of Gordon A. Pym is that this one actually falls on a cliffhanger. <laughs> the story just kind of ends on a cliffhanger. We don't really know what the final result is. And then the notes at the end of this story, at least in this collection, where it includes some notes, indicate that the last couple of chapters were lost and thus not included. So we don't really know what happened to conclude the story. And it's left up to the reader's imagination. You're just gonna have to figure out an ending for yourself, but it does kind of end on a cliffhanger, which is kind of annoying, but kind of makes it fun and interesting at the same time, right? But there you have it, the narrative of Gordon A. Pym. And there you have it, my collection of Poe stories for the month of July. So again, if you like this content, if you want to hear more about Poe stories, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you know when I upload my next Edgar Allan Poe video. And until then, join me over on the Discord where we can chat about it. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep on reading. Bye.